Jesus was a rock star. He brought the dead to life. Bless God. Would you pray with me and, and say, Jesus, help me to be what you want me to be. And do what you want me to do. Because people without you go to hell. Thank you, Father. If you can hear this message, listen closely. To the exiled, misunderstood, or upside down, this is your message of hope. When problems come, use them. When enemies persecute you, love them. These struggles are a fire refining you into gold. Look around. You are not forgotten. You are not alone. Challenge what is expected of you. This world is not your home. You are different. Oh, you are different. This is week two in our series. And can I tell you a preacher's secret? The funnest way to preach anything is like a book study like this because you stumble into stuff and and it's like, well, Pastor, you talk about it all the time. Then you can say, well, it's only because it's in the scripture all the time. So anyway, that's that's how kind of you run into that with, with these uh, kinds of messages when you walk through a message. And Peter, uh, it was written by... Peter, yeah, and it was actually a disciple Peter. That can be confusing in the scripture sometimes. You know, you got different people got the same names. But this is disciple Peter, and I told you this last week, but just as a recap, this is about 20 years after the resurrection of Christ. Peter's been doing ministry for a while. Uh, this is, it's been a long time since he denied Christ to that little girl. It's been a little while since he's been, he stood up and he preached, and 3,000 people got saved. Boisterous Peter was, is now theologian Peter. He is doing a, incredible things. And the message of, of, of this book is that, this, that you're different. You, you should be different. Now, maybe you have seen a Christian in your life, and you saw somebody, and they went to church on Sunday, and they talked about God, and they talked about church, but there was nothing different about their lives. Have you seen that, that situation? And it's like, well, you act just like that other guy that doesn't have Christ, and, you act, and we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be different. Now, that can be hard uh, in a culture that likes to pretend it's better than it really is. But God is calling us to be different. Because if we're not different, if we don't look any different, how, how are we going to let his light shine? How are we going to have something to offer? Because this world is not our own, we are called to be different. With that in mind, if you want to just take a, a minute... And, and we're going to do something different today. I don't normally do this. A lot of churches do this all the time. But if you would stand with me for the reading of the word, we're just going to do, we're just going to stand. A lot of churches do this all the time. <clears throat> Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed in his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires that you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all that you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially. Live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear as temporary residents. First Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Lord, we come to you even right now, and we just ask God that you would take the words of this scripture and that you would bury them deep into our hearts. Dear Jesus, that we would not be able to escape your voice today because, God, I know I know that I know that I know that your word wants to come in and change us today. And so, Lord, in some ways, this is a bit of a, a difficult verse. Lord, you didn't, uh, you didn't create us to fit in. You created us to stand out. God, you didn't create us to blend. You created us to be different. Lord, the way other people go through brokenness and hurting and stress and all those things. Lord, all these things are so normal, but you've asked us to be different. You've asked us to walk through trials different, like we talked last week, God. 
Jesus, you said that there was a normal road. There was a wide road and it led to death. God, we want to be different and we want to go the harder way that leads to life, not only for us, but for the people that we love. Lord, our kids, our friends, our families, our moms and dads, our aunts and uncles, God, we want to be different for them. And we're willing to travel the narrow road. God, I pray that we would indeed be different in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. You can have a seat today. If you are perfect today, you are in the wrong place, okay? This is not a place for perfect people. Now, there are no perfect people. I don't know, you probably, some of you knew that, all right? But, but a lot of people like to pretend that they're perfect. They like to put on perfect airs. When I first got, a, got going in ministry, it was the early 90s. And the culture was such that as a minister, you're supposed to have this very professional air. The culture has changed a bit, um, you know, but you, you didn't let any weakness show. You were just, you know, now the culture is, we're able to be a little more authentic, which I function a lot better being able to be who I am. And um, so if I'm, if I'm going to offend somebody by, by being me, it's just good to do that early in the relationship so I irritate you right away. Uh, you know, and, and so if you're per- so if you're perfect, or if you if like trying to pretend you're perfect, you know you'll be a duck out of water here because there's one thing Rock Church does pretty well is not being perfect, and but nobody is perfect though. But we do a pretty good job of, uh, of trying not to pretend. You know what I mean? I, at least I, I think that's who we are. That we're I think we're pretty authentic people. You know what you see is is what you get. And I, I loved the Lord when I was a kid. And I, I had some troubled years in there and, and, and things. I'm not telling that story today. But the point is, when, uh, when I was in high school, I, I was radical for Jesus. I mean, I, I, was, I was really radical. And I had my, my best friend, Paul, he had, he had gotten saved. I prayed for my first person. I'm praying in tongues. That's what I was right there. I prayed for my first person to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit when I was about 14 years old. And, um, and, and he came to my Bible study. My friend Paul came to my Bible study, and he had this thing. And, and I loved Jesus. I really did. I was radical for him. I was grateful for what he did in my life. And one day, I, and, and I've told this story before, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a different part of it that I usually leave out, okay? So if you've heard this story before, I'm going to give you a, an extra little, little something, something that was, I normally leave out because it's, it's not flattering to, to yours truly. And, and, uh, and the story is I had just gotten my driver's license, okay? And, uh, and when I first got my driver's license, I was going to buy my mom's car. Now, my mom, they bought brand new in 1972 a Cutlass Supreme. My dad put a four barrel on it. It was a pretty cool car. You could be at a stoplight, because <clears throat> I had it for a week. <clears throat> you could be at a stoplight, and you could, and th- this is how smart Scott was at 16, all right? Uh, you could be at a stoplight. You could put the f- pedal on the floor, light up the tires, and let it up again, and you didn't move at all. That was, that was this car, right? And uh, you could, it, it, was, it was powerful, man. It was fun to drive. And I, and I was driving, and I was dri- we were driving to Moorhead for some reason. I was coming on, I was merging onto I-29. I and and I, this car is it, pretty powerful, and, and it was kind of raining, you know, and, and stuff. But I, I needed to merge into traffic, and so I was going to get up and get into traffic. Well, I, had, I was going, I, was, I don't know how fast you're going to get off of a, a, an on-ramp, maybe 40 miles an hour or whatever. Well, anyway, I, I, th- I had to get into traffic quick, you know, and so I stomped on it. Well, when I stomped on it, it lit up those back tires, and I went, woo, 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 and I was squealing all over the place, fish tailing everywhere, and it was, and I made the ten o'clock news that day, actually. Um, yeah, the, the the news crew was there before the police were. Um, it was uh, five cars and a semi involved in this in this situation. Lined up a whole row of cars banged up on I ninety four. It was awesome. The part of the story that I usually don't say is that we are we're driving and and, and I'm, I'm we're fish tailing and then the first poof, poof, you know that sound that horrible sound when you're hitting stuff right that poof, poof, and that's that's happening and, and you have never heard such a prayer so laced with profanity in your entire life. 
And it wasn't, and it wasn't, you know how you kind of got, you got some swear words that if you're on the forum, they're not swear words. You know what those are? I won't say them here, right? Okay, because they would be a swear word right here. But there are certain words that, that if you're shoveling stuff on the farm, that it's not a swear word. It wasn't those, okay? It, it wasn't those. It was, it, it, it was something and it, and it rhymed with a duck, okay? And it was, and it was over and over and over again. And it was, and it would, and it just came flowing out. And, and, and see, the thing is, is when, no matter how much you pretend, the mouth, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth, the mouth speaks. <clears throat> and uh, I, was, I, don't, I don't talk that way, you know. I, I'm not sure that my kid, no, I've never, I, I don't think I've ever used that word around my daughter. I, I, you know, I, I try not to say it even in my head. You know, I, I, I'm, I won't promise that I've never done that, you know, because I have. Um, and, but, you know, but we, we are supposed to be, different but sometimes we're just not different enough you know what I mean and, and I know a, a guy who, who is uh he was a pastor and he was at, at he was working at a carpentry shop and he he threw his tools across the room and he cussed everybody out and well you know we were supposed to be different but we were not different right away it's a process so we come to Jesus as we are and then he makes us into who he wants us to be but it matters that we be set apart. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires that you did when you lived in ignorance. But as he who called you holy, be holy in all you do. Be holy, for I am ho- holy. Some Christians have a theology that's called, be happy as I am happy. And, and so many people wrongly believe that God's highest calling for your life is your happiness. And I'm sorry, it's not. It, it, is the greatest desire for your kid happiness? Well, you, I guess we want our kids to be happy. But are you going to let your kids do dumb stuff to get happy that's going to hurt them later? No, you don't do that. So your highest priority isn't that your kid be happy right now, right? Your, your, your highest priority is your kid gets to experience every joy that he has. And so God's highest priority for you is not your happiness. Your, God's highest priority for you is you, that you be holy as he is holy. That is his priority for you. God really does want you to become more like him every day, every week, every year. He wants you to be holy like he is holy. That's what he wants for you. It's not, happy. it's not about happiness. It's about holiness. And holiness means he wants you to be set apart. It's a, it's a wrong theology. So since I'm not happy, if I'm not because ha- if you get in this theology of happiness, um, if, if I'm not happy, then it must not be God's will. If I'm not comfortable, this must not be God's will. I'm not happy in my marriage, and, and so I'm leaving. I, I, I want this thing. I, I can't have this thing. I'm going to just rack up my credit cards. And I'm going to get this thing, okay? <laughs> I want it. I need it. I want it now, okay? And I, I, I do this. You know, I started you know, looking at this and looking at that. Um, you know, you know that you need to rate, wait for the right person. I, I've had this conversation all the time, and I, and I met this person, and, and I said, do they love Jesus? And they just look down. And it's like, well, but I, I want this so bad. I, I need this right right now. God, I prayed about it, and I've heard, and I actually heard this about a month ago, the exact situation. I'm dating this girl, and she's so great, Pastor. She's so wonderful. Oh, and she loves Jesus. You know, no. But I prayed about it, and it really feels good. I tell you what, man. When you, if you have to pray about something that God has already said in his word, you're given a big opening for the enemy to step in and to give you a false sense of security. Don't pray about something that he's already given you his answer in his word. It, 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 just, it just doesn't work. Because there is a peace that can come that can make you feel comfortable with your self-delusion. And people do that all, all, all the time. It's amazing. When we believe that God wants us happy above else, uh, he wants us more than discomfort, delay, risk, suffering. It, it can't be God's will if his will for me is to be happy. But his will isn't for you to be happy. His will for you is to be holy. And can I tell you that holiness is so much better than happiness. When you have been washed and you walk in that freedom. But I I can't do my call yet. I got more to do here. I want to go there. God 
It does not exist to serve me. I exist to serve him. The Greek word for holy, <coughs> hagios, holy, to be set apart, different, separate, pure. Holiness means separate. You can't be holy and be like everybody else. You can't be holy and be like everybody Because how many times, you know, you can, you can backslide, right? You can fall into temptation. Why don't we ever talk about falling into holiness? You ever heard anybody say that? Whoa, this week I slipped right into holiness. Does that ever happen? No, it don't happen. You don't, you don't accidentally become holy because your nature is sinful. Left to your own devices, you will always choose the more selfish path that makes you happy. That's who you are. You're sick. You, we, need, we all need help. We're all in the same boat here. You don't, you don't slip into holy, and you, but it's easy to slip into sin because the enemy comes. He's been doing it from the very beginning. He came to Eve and he said, did God really say? Did, did God really say that you couldn't take whiskey shots before church? Did God really say? Some of you did. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hear more pot people. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's a joke. I don't know. But did God really say, did God, did God really say you can't watch that MA rated show on Netflix? You know? Did did God really say that you can't look at porn? It's not like you're cheating, you know? Did God really say that you can't stay in this movie theater in 45 minutes and watch Fifty Shades of Fred? Did you see that walking in? Anyway, that's funny. Um did God, but it's, God is so sneaky. You don't slip into holiness, but it is such a quick slip into bondage. It is such a quick slip into temptation and sin. It's so subtle and so quick. We're Christians. We should enjoy different music than the world does. We're Christians. We should enjoy different uh, entertainment than the world does. We're Christians. Our eyes should land on different things than the world does. And I try to be very careful here of picking on certain sins because some of you are dealing with big sins and some of you, God is going to hammer you today for little sins, okay? Because he wants all of us to be holy. It's not about holy, because we, we wear Christ's holiness, but that's, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm not that bad. I'm a lot better than a lot of people. I'm better than that guy. We live in a culture that is content with being better than that guy. And that's what we do all the time. We just fit in to whatever pack we're in. We want to just, whatever social norms are, we just want to kind of be that and fit right in. You know, I, I got some questions for you, and, and these are just for you to answer between you and God. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to write them down. If you want to write it down to think about later, you certainly could, but... What are the three areas that I struggle most trying to fit in? What are the three areas where you struggle most trying to fit in? And what I mean by this is, you know, where are you trying to fit in and how are you trying to fit in? When was a time that I put my happiness above God's call for holiness? Boy, you want a question that brings some conviction to your heart? Lord, where in my life, not even, not sin, sin, you know, did God really say, oh, scripture didn't exactly say this, but is there a time when I put my happiness above God's holiness? What are the biggest ways that I'm different than the world? How, what is the biggest ways that I'm different than the world? Because if you are a Jesus follower, if you've been letting him work on you for a while, you should be different. You should be different than the world. What area, what is the area that God wants me to be different? As I'm preaching today, and again, I don't like picking on, picking on too many pet sins because I, I don't want to shine too bright a light on some and too small a light on another. So I let the Holy Spirit do that. But here today, could we ask the question together and say, Hey, God, in what area do you want me to be different? How, God, do you want me to be different. I know you're calling me to something better. I know you're calling me to something higher. I know, God, that you want me to be different. What, what's next, God? Because the way this thing works is you first come to Christ and you got the big stuff. You're hooked on meth. That's the big stuff, right? God, we're going to take care of this. This is going to destroy me. And you start with the big stuff and then he works his way down. 
And after you serve him a while, you know what the good thing is? Is that you, when you walk with Jesus, if you don't become a spoiled brat, old fart Christian, which a lot of people do. See, the moment, the moment you say no to getting better, you get stagnant. When you get stagnant, you get prideful and hard-hearted. When you get prideful and hard-hearted, you become a spoiled brat, old fart Christian. You're the little old lady that doesn't let the kids have the second cookie at church. Okay, you're that person. When you, when you resist God's conviction of making you more holy. The moment you say no to him, the moment that you say no to the sanctifying process and you say, God, I'm good enough. The minute you think you're good enough for him is the, is the day when you stagnate and you become a spoiled brat old for our Christian. And that's no way, it's mediocrity. It's no way to live. It's unproductive. And you will be unhappy and the people around you will be unhappy. So why be holy? Why does it even matter? Well, because for you know <laughs> that it is not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from. The, you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ the Lamb. Be without blemish. Because it wasn't, it wasn't silver or gold that you were redeemed with. It was your Jesus there is no way I can ever pay him back. There is no way I can ever be good enough for him. It's not going to happen. So I just throw at my Jesus' feet all that I am, everything I ever will be, my hopes, my dreams, my pride, my finances, my ego. Man, I just throw it at his feet. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God who raised him from the dead and glorified him. So your faith and hope are in God. God says, be holy for I am holy. It's because of who he is. He is holy. God is, he's, he is perfection. The only thing that God can't do is contradict himself. He can't be not holy. He can't do it. He can't contradict himself. God is love. He can't not love. It's not what he does. It's who he is. Holiness isn't what he does. Holiness is what he is. You see, it's not that I have to become holy. It's that I want to be coming become holy. I want to become holy. We're not talking about behavior modification. We're talking about spiritual transformation and that looks and feels completely different. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you had somebody around you and they came and they came to you with a faith that was basically a set of rules that you had to follow. They came to you, well you want to be a Christian, say this prayer now Everything, you know, we're going to, you got to quit doing this and this and this. And, and, you're, and they came up with you a bunch of rules and a and big list of, of stuff. But, you know, it's not about behavior modification. You, you can't get good enough to deserve heaven. You, you have to wear Christ's righteousness. It never was about your holiness. It was always about his holiness. Now, you could say, well, then pra praise God, Pastor Scott. I'll put on his holiness and now I don't have to change. But he says, be holy because I am holy. I have called you to be different. I've called you to be set apart. <clears throat> Living holy isn't the path to knowing Christ. Living holy is not the path to living Christ. But knowing Christ is the path to holiness. Knowing Christ is the path because when you are knowing him, like what we're going to do tonight at T for T and we get in his presence and we focus on him in an intense way. When you are with him, he makes you holy because you are laid bare. See, in the scripture, there's a lot of light in heaven. It says that it, and that light is coming from him. And the thing about light, it exposes everything and that can be very uncomfortable. It hurts to be exposed. It hurts to have the unflattering things about you just laid out for everybody to see. 
But that's when holiness comes because when we come, he is the one who brings healing. I cry out for mercy, not for forgiveness because he's already forgiven me, but I cry out for mercy that he would change me, that I would never have to sin again. In, in the Lord's prayer, it says, Lord, lead me not into temptation. Walking in his mercy, that I'm not bound to that sin anymore. He's the only one that can change this heart. He's the only one that could ever make me new. Knowing Christ is the path to living holy. How is God asking you to be different today? Or maybe another question. Have you been trying to serve a legalistic God? Because that's not your God. When you come to him, and you say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. Let me say something about that real quick, though. In the American church, we're starting at the top down. We say, God can do this for you, this for you, this for you, this for you, this for you. And if he isn't doing all this for you, there's something wrong with your relationship with God. And we're selling the gospel as a self-help product. But Jesus said, I am the cornerstone. You know what the cornerstone of your Christian faith needs to be? It's not for the blessing that God's word can bring you. And it will. And it can. Because truth always works. And his word is true. So the Bible will make your life better. But the moment you begin to try to build your relationship between the two of you, because he'll somehow make you a better dad or make you a better employee or fix this in your life or fix that in your life... That's not the foundation. The foundation of our relationship with God is not what we can do for each other. It isn't how he can enhance my life and make me a better person. The foundation for our relationship is you're holy and I'm not. God, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean. Like your word says, take my sin and throw it as far as the east is from the west. God cast it into a ocean of forgetfulness the word says that when you repent of your sins he doesn't even remember it anymore he doesn't think about it he doesn't go back there anymore he washes you because when he washes me he i put his righteousness on like a robe so when he looks at me he doesn't see my filth he doesn't see what's going on and what has gone on in my head and what i've done all he sees is the perfection of Christ because Christ stood in my place on the cross. Any other foundation for your relationship with God other than he is holy and I am not is going to leave you hanging. And so if you have been, people have tried to sell you a legalistic God in the past, I want to apologize for that preacher that person that didn't quite get it because our God is not a legalistic God. But at the same time, you see, the way to get to Christ is not to become holy. I can never earn anything. But if I want to be holy, I do it through Christ because when he puts his robe on me and I get to stand in his presence forgiven, I mean forgiven, forgiven, clean oh, that every each and every one of you could experience that to stand forgiven it's so good because when you stand forgiven and you realize that you are washed and you didn't deserve it there's nothing you could have done to earn it you're like God my life for you you see the way to holiness is through Christ and he begins to put his hands on you and he begins to change things. We're going to receive the offering in a few minutes, but I'll be a little bit more. So, <clears throat> would you close your eyes with me and just try to kind of get alone with the Lord in your own head? Jesus, we love you. We want to be like you, God, but we're so broken, so needy. I can't do this on my own, God. 
God, how are you asking us to be different today? Jesus, as you look at our lives, I pray, God, that you would bring to each and every one of our minds how you want me to be different. Maybe it's gross sin. Maybe, God, it's, it's some little thing. I don't know what it is. But, God, I pray that you would show us how you want us to be different. Show us, God, how you want us to be different. Lord, there's some here today where you have not been in the right priority. And I know that they feel a pull right now, God. I know they feel an ache. They know they're missing out. God, I pray that each and every one of us today would be owned by you would be arrested by you, God, enamored with you, dear Jesus. If you're here today and you would like to give Jesus your life, maybe you've served him a while, but he fell out of priority. Would you put a cross on your card today and just say, today I'm giving Jesus my life. This is a new line in the sand. I don't want to be the same. I want to be different. So Jesus, we come to you today and I pray it would be the prayer of every single heart in this place. But Jesus, come in my life. Forgive me of my sins. Make me new. But God, I pray that each and every person in this place would get to experience I am clean. God, that they get to experience that washing, that being completely clean. And Lord, I pray that you would make us holy. Lord, you, David said, Lord, create in me a clean heart. I, I can't do it on my own, God. Create in me a clean heart. I let it get so corrupt. I let it get so ugly. God, create in me something new. Lord, let me walk in mercy. Lead me not into temptation, God. Deliver me from evil because I can't deliver myself. That temptation grabs us and pulls us down over and over and over again. God, I can't promise that I will be perfect, God, because, but I can promise I'm going to fight. I will not give up. Lord, as long as your grace does not stop, I will not stop. I will get up again and again and again and again. God, I will never stop pursuing you. Because you have wrapped me in your grace. You have wrapped me in your mercy, Jesus. And so I will never stop. I will always be yours, God. Even if I fail, I'm still yours. Even if I struggle, I am still owned by you, God. Every fiber of my being is going to try to become holy. Not because you require it, but because, God, that's what you want for me. And I love you. I don't want to be holy to earn anything. I can never earn anything, God. But I give everything. I can't earn anything, but I give everything to you, Jesus. Make me new. Now, I got one more minute. I'm going to wrap up a couple minutes early. There's some of you here today that it is destiny that you are here today. God knew that you were going to be in this room in this moment. And he's spoken something to you while we've been walking through his word together this morning. I just want to encourage you that that was him. And he means it. He's serious about it. And if you want the entirety of the glory and the joy that he has for your life, You got to submit to his holiness, submit to his process. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus was a rock star.